There, there's tremendous support, both sort of in the public at large and among certain organizations in, you know, in, in Western and developed societies to really push this. Um, and I think it's an interesting question as to why. I mean, to, some people are looking at the literature and drawing somewhat different conclusions from me, right? Fair enough. Um, others seem to believe in the inherent value of a wage standard um, um, or, or the moral value of a wage standard. I'm not a philosopher. I don't really know exactly what that means. So I don't, I don't really, when people give me that argument, I say, you know, that's your call. Um, uh, I, 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 I do think issues of low wage workers in developing countries, and China obviously is not, you know, not where it used to be, um, uh, get summarized in the Western world. And, you know, it, as this is all, it's always a terrible thing when people make what look like low wages. Well, these are low wage countries, right? You know, and the question of what's appropriate and what is, you know, what is exploitive and what's not is, is a much more complicated question that's often, that, that, than is usually let on. I think Richard Freeman wrote, wrote a very interesting piece that tried to get at this question. He said, he said, well, if we're gonna put pressure on these countries to raise their wages, sort of what's realistic and feasible? And he had a very interesting perspective. He's a, he, he, he did lots of early work on unions, right? And I think his work tends to be um, not very negative on unions and in some cases positive. Um, and I think his perspective was, look, in, you know, if we look at unionized workers in the U.S., I mean, some industries they've killed, but some they haven't. But it seems like unions can push up wages 10 or 15 percent without real adverse consequences. You know, if they start to go way beyond that, the consequences get very adverse. He says, you know, look, I don't know what that, how that maps exactly into, you know, a factory in China, right? But it, it gives us some sense of what kind of magnitudes businesses might be able to absorb and adjust on enough other margins that you're not going to see some sort of devastation of employment. But standards that say, you know, double or triple the wage, who knows what's going to happen? And it's a very competitive world. And I mean, my understanding is, you know, some of the very low wage producers are, are not in China anymore, right? Because now they can go to other countries that had developed enough like Vietnam and, and find even lower wage workers. And that's a reality you have to deal with. So um, I think it gets, it gets tremendously oversimplified. Um, but I'm not surprised the ILO pushes this, and I think that's consistent with their agenda.